Dr. David Schiller here, and today we're going to be talking about brain function and your Hashimoto's. Uh, last year, in 2013, there was a study published in the Indian Journal of Nuclear Medicine where they, they studied a case study of a woman who had Hashimoto's but also had encephalopathy. And although encephalopathy coming from Hashimoto's they consider to be a rare condition, uh, we see patients all the time that due to their Hashimoto's they have brain fog. They have an inability to recall words or they've lost the ability to calculate. Uh, they get tired from reading where, where reading never caused them to be fatigued before. General sense of fatigue can be a sign of brain malfunction. So just know that when you have Hashimoto's autoimmunity, brain function can become a part of the uh, damage that's produced from that autoimmunity. Now, what was found is that even though they, they were able to reduce the inflammation by using medications, the brain degeneration persisted. So just know that the brain is going to be affected. Now, in previous posts, we talked about hair loss and brittle hair and how uh, oxygen to the brain or our blood circulation to the brain was essential to keep that hair intact. If we know that you're having circulatory problems due to the autoimmunity or due to the hypothyroidism, you know, people that have low thyroid have cold hands, cold feet, cold nose, know that the brain is an, uh, excuse me, the head is an extremity just like the arms and hands are. So if you're having those symptoms, there's a very good chance that you are having lack of circulation up to the brain. And when the brain gets affected, you know that if the brain is controlling everything, it can then cause a, uh, an effect that it's uh, causing malfunction to the rest of the body as well. So imperative in any type of management of a person who has hypothyroid or Hashimoto's hypothyroid, Rehabilitating the brain is going to be essential. You need to find which pathways functionally are not working. And by virtue of exercising them, just like you'd exercise a muscle that has become weak, you can exercise the pathways so that you can rehabilitate that brain. In order to rehabilitate the brain, you know, to get rid of the brain fog, to get rid of the memory issues, you need to find out which pathways are going on. You need to decrease the inflammation. You need to increase circulation, getting oxygen to the area, and making sure that your sugar is stable, blood sugar particularly, because the brain is always in need of a constant and stable supply of sugar. So that's why you can't just look at the thyroid in isolation. You need to look at blood sugar balance. You need to look at what's causing the inflammation. You need to look at um, how you can get rid of the inflammation, or at least decrease it. A, a, a proper evaluation of that person includes looking at the entire person, not just how the thyroid is functioning, looking at how the brain is functioning and how you can help that. Once your brain goes, then the rest of your health is going to go downhill as well because the brain controls everything. So I hope this information helps. I hope it uh, motivates you to do something about your health for the positive and uh, I would thank you for watching and make it a great day.